Hi, welcome to the Worthy Physician Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sapna Shah Hawk, a board certified internal medicine physician. Keep life simple. You are human. You are worthy. Remember what matters to you. Our goal is to help physicians remember this and to make it a reality through addressing various components of physician burnout via podcast. This is meant to be used as a tool to help guide physicians. It does not take place of professional medical help. Opinions reflected in this are my own. So today on The Worthy Physician, this will be one of two-part series. On this podcast, we're actually going to address nutrition and how it can affect us, how to modulate nutrition to be one of the areas that we can control and it slightly affects burnout, as we know nutrition affects our overall wellness. Today and on the next episode, we will be talking with Dameda Ojeda, or Tammy, who is a dietitian, studied at the University of Puerto Rico in Rio Piedras campus and internshiped at the VA in the Caribbean Health Systems, also in Puerto Rico. She gives us some insight on mindfulness, as well as some insight or even tips and tricks on how to prepare simple yet nutritious meals for physicians on the go, anybody with a busy lifestyle. So sit back, grab a healthy snack, and enjoy. Tammy, the reason why I asked you to come on the yes, podcast, ma'am. don't, 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 I'm younger than you. <laughs> you are. <laughs> But anyways, although um, people don't believe it, that I am the age I am. It's funny. So that's a, that's a great, that's a great segue. And a lot of that is not just some of that's genetics, but also it's how you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited. I'm excited for this. I, I, I already sat down and had a, a little kind of brainstorm idea of, you know, type up what I thought would be important for me to say based sure. on what you you have mentioned but i'll let you ask questions and kind of follow and then hopefully sure I answer everything well and if you don't we can say hey why don't we do that on another episode gives us a reason to talk <laughs> right <laughs> um but part of the reason why um so this podcast is about physician burnout and I know you as Tammy, but do you want me to, do you want to tell me your name, how we know each other, give a little bit about a background about yourself? Oh, how much time do I have? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. However so, much you want. That's the beauty <laughs> of this. I, um, my name is Damaire Ojeda and I am Cuban Puerto Rican. I am half and half. So I always say, don't you feel sorry for my husband? <laughs> um, so I am a clinical dietitian. I've been practicing dietetics since 2005. Um, I started in biology. I was going to go into vet school. Imagine that. And then it kind of, no, it did not work for me. So I had to inseminate a cow, Dr. Shahak, and that was not my thing. So then I was like, okay, I really need to kind of think about this. truly where I'm where I'm going. And so I, I looked into dietetics, which I didn't know it was a field um, until that point, because um, I was obese, really, really obese when I was a child. And when I was about 15 years old, I got tired of being bullied. Um, thankfully, never got violent bully, but it was wow. mental bullying. And it, you know, it still yeah. does something to you. So oh, yeah. Yeah. my dumb, my very dumb teenager brain decided to be anorexic and you know that was the best way for me to lose the weight and oh, wow the funny thing is is I remember I would think like I'm not gonna you know I'm gonna stop I'm gonna start eating more I'm gonna exercise less but then people kept saying like you look so good you know yeah. and that was like well then it's working you know people are liking me now and anyway so thankfully, um, my dad snapped me out of it. My dad was a pediatrician in Cuba. Oh, wow. He was, one, he was very renowned pediatrician in Cuba. And he, I could see the worry in his face and I yeah. admired him tremendously. And, and I don't really remember what helped me, but it snapped me out. But because of that, I ended up being um, hypoglycemic. 
mm-hmm. and reactive hypoglycemia yeah. and not that di- not diabetic but hypoglycemic yeah or low blood sugars yeah yeah and um so then i had i had to eat very frequently i visited with a dietitian and you know and that's when it kind of i was like well maybe this is something for me and it's been amazing. I love what I do. It, I've taken a very different direction in my career for the last um, about four to three, three to four years. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where we met at the VA. Right. So when I got the job at the VA about four years ago, you were already there as a dietitian in the primary care team. I'm sorry, as a doctor in the primary care teams. Right, right. And so we first met because they asked me to teach Zumba for like employee breaks, remember? Right, I do. And so, so I loved, it. I, loved it. I loved it too. But you know, things happen and you have to stop doing it because other other things um, take your time. Yeah, mainly patients, my clinic was busier and busier. So I just yeah. couldn't do it. Right. Um, but I taught about 15, 20 minutes of Zumba. And that's where I first met you. And then um, my job, evol- my, my boss at the time was like, well, we're developing the primary care dietitian side and, you know, the teams, and we're going to have these, what we call pack teams or patient aligned, aligned care teams and right. dietitians supposed to be there. And do you want to be the, per- the person developing the, the process? And I looked at her like, heck yeah, like sign me in. I'm developing something. That's my thing right there. Right. So they assigned me to the wonderful team 13. And that's why I did, you know, we started working together. That team was amazing. It was. And I remember saying when you decided, when you decided to leave us for the very good reasons, we all understood, but we were all very sad. (laughs) Yeah. I said, the team's going to crumble. You know what the good stuff that we had done, we had done because of your amazing leadership. And I remember it was not just that it was the fact that you respected every profession. Right. Right. And to me, that was amazing because sad to say when I develop as a dietitian in Puerto Rico, sad to say, and they may be different now. I have to clarify. I haven't been in Puerto Rico working for about eh, 10 years. Right. Eh, No more. Oh my goodness. 12. It's my oldest age. Um, (laughs) Doctors over there. Right. That's how I track things. Yeah. That's how I track things. My kids' is age. Anyway, so in Puerto Rico, dietitians are like sideline people. Like they don't matter. They don't know anything, right? They only are, we're only called when you need TPN. <laughs> That's when you only call the dietitian. That's it. Oh boy. That's pretty <laughs> much it. Oh. Or at least back then, back then, right? I mean, again, they have changed. Don't, don't hate on me. Um, but here, when I started working with you and the team, it was like, everybody had a place and everybody knew their thing. And I remember like, oh my God, this is it. This is it. Like I have a place where I can make a difference where, yeah. and remember the patients. I mean, that you one made guy, that one I guy, made a yeah. difference. That yeah. one, that one guy lost a hundred pounds, no crazy diets. Right. He no blood pressure. He was what? And, and, and we can talk about that, right? Without names. Correct. Um, he was on multiple medications, but as he dropped off, he was able to get off meds um, and right. He, he was he was, I mean, patient outcomes improved because of I'll be real honest with you. I mean, I don't know shit about diet, right? It's only because of right. <laughs> they don't teach us out of medical school. Like that's what you're for. And that's why you were part of the PAC team. They don't. Yeah. And that's and that's what baffles me that you uh, you guys still have to the say, but not all of you understand that really the expertise is in us, you know, like we are there to help you. We're not there to take the shine or anything. We're there to help you, to help the patient, to help you help them. But that's the thing, you know, if, if, if it's right for the patient and and that's where I think Mm -hmm. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And I think, you know, um, consulting cardiologists is just as important as uh, consulting dietitian because Let's be real honest. The standard American diet or the sad diet is exactly that. Sad and mm-hmm. <laughs> very American. <laughs> uh, but but part of the reason I wanted to bring That's funny. it. It's it's true. I mean, standard American diet, SAD, mm-hmm. right? Um, it is quite sad and it is quite sad about the health in the country. But also, you know, let's think about 
let's think about healthcare, right? Particularly right now in the uh, mm -hmm. pandemic, everybody is tired, overstretched, shortage with beds, staffing, nurses, doctors, uh, and ancillary staff. I like to read a little bit about medicine on my on the side, right? I don't read a lot for enjoyment. That's where audible books come in or audiobooks. Medicine kind of takes things away from you. And with this podcast, I've, I'm kind of, at least from my own understanding, uh, physician burnout because it's 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 huge, and not just physician burnout, but burnout in general in life, uh, particularly in the healthcare field because that's that's really the only field I know. But I came across Har well, Harvard Health Blog, nutritional psychiatry, food for your brain. It was an article from March 2020. And it basically says that a high processed diet, high in sugar, processed, right? Because there are really three things, fats, proteins, and carbs. And all little carbs are created equal. But the more processed food that you eat, the higher the inflammatory markers, uh, um, mm -hmm. higher inflammation, higher oxidative stress makes you feel crappy, can exacerbate um, mental health, uh, depression, anxiety, make you feel kind of shitty. And so you look at it and you kind of say, okay, absolutely. Burnout, burnout, right? Physician burnout, healthcare burnout. If you walk into a nurse's station or you walk into, if you walked into our room and you pulled out that drawer of our snacks, I had the nuts, right? I had the nuts, but what else was in there? <laughs> um, you know what? The ch it was didn't you? It wasn't there like chocolate covered almonds too? I remember those chocolate covered almonds, chocolate covered. Um, I love those. Beans. They were good, right? A little bit of dark chocolate and almonds, but <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go over to the, you know, you go over to the canteen and go into the store, and what would you find? You'd find, uh, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Every every now and then, you need a little bit of you need a little bit of bacon for breakfast, but. It was, right. everything was highly processed, highly fried. You go into this, the, the store and it's hard to find fresh fruits and vegetables. I mean, it's half the time I was grabbing a protein bar for, for lunch. And it's just like, what the hell? We got to do better. Why in the world, when we're in a healthcare system and we're trying to take care of our employees, right? In air quotes, why do we offer just, why are the staff workers, healthcare workers always looking for soda and and gummy bears and just crap why i think it's a combination of things so yeah. so follow me one it's delicious and of course it triggers those um sensors of oh my god sugar fat ooh, happiness right so and you you know you're coming from a moment of you're tired you're exhausted you're yeah. sad because you lost your patient or you know whatever it is right and you have this sugar and fat that's giving you this instant happiness, of course, you're going to get hooked on it, right? Right. That's one. Two, to be able to prepare the healthier foods needs not only knowledge, but skills. Yeah. And so when you look at hospital cafeterias, yes, they are doing a much better work in general. Mm -hmm. Hospitals are. But you still got to pay that staff that instead of frying the chicken needs to know how to bake the chicken completely, you know, and thoroughly till it's safe. That takes time. That takes planning. You know, in our case, we're lucky. I'm, and I didn't mention it. I, I'm the manager in the kitchen at a hospital. Right. Um, I have a chef, thankfully, that, and he does amazing work and yes. planning and, and, and com coming up with these delicious meals, you know, but you have to have the staff with the skills. So right. for that, you have to pay them. Right. <laughs> and that's the problem. That's another uh, one. Gotcha. Then you evolve into, okay, so I won't eat in the cafeteria, right? I'm a healthcare worker. I won't eat in the cafeteria. I'm going to bring my lunch, right. but um, nobody really taught me how to make healthier meals. Nobody really taught me how to cook something quick and easy. All I know how to do is like my brother, all he did, all he, he's going to kill me. Don't, don't publish this. But all he <laughs> did for me was like fried eggs. It's all he could do. Right. They're kind of delicious though. Right. They are delicious, but here's the deal. Even me, my dad taught me how to cook, right? He taught mm -hmm. me how to cook rice and beans. 
a, maybe a couple of meets, but that was it. He didn't yeah. have time. He was a single dad right. in a new country with a full-time job, a long hour travel. He had to travel like an hour and a half going, an hour and a half coming. Was this in Puerto Rico time. or Cuba? Puerto Rico. So oh, wow. he didn't have time, you know? Yeah. So, so I didn't learn until I was older. And I was like, you know what? This is crap. I need to, I really need to learn how to cook. That was not, that was like four years ago. So <laughs> it wasn't that, but it wasn't that I'm sad to say. Um, but so again, it's a combination of things, right? Then right. is this mythical beast of, um, healthy foods are expensive, right? Right. So here's my answer to that. What's that? Tell me. How much are you paying in medications to control your blood pressure and blood sugars and your lipids? How much are you spending in medications for all of that chronic pain that you have? For all, how much are you spending in doctor visits? How much are you spending in chips and soda? Are you going to tell me that a bottle of soda, two liter soda is not going to be more expensive than a thing of bananas or it's not you know what i mean yeah How, particularly, again particularly when a lot of people say yeah i drink about a liter of soda a day and i'm like and those people you know it's yeah yeah and so like that one guy it, it it was and everybody has everybody has a better way to eat that applies to them right and that's right. one of the things i try when we when we were in the teams i tried to visit with each patient individually and it always took me that first visit always took me an hour, right. but it's because I wanted to take time to understand why they were doing the things they were doing right. so that then we could address it the way they wanted to address, not the way my book said, not the way my journal said, right. the way, the way I knew would work, but fit them better. Right. So this one guy that we talked about lost all this weight, yeah. he was eating out three meals a day. I yeah. don't know if you remember Yeah, I do. because that was the only socialize. That was the only socializing he had. Wow. Right. Yeah. So when, when he started talking to me and he was so happy to talk to me and I was paying attention to what he wanted and, you know, what he was saying. And I said, you know, you really like going to this cough cafeteria place, don't you? And he said, yeah, I really, you know, he kind of stopped and thought about it and he said, you know, yeah, I really enjoy going because I get to talk to people. I get et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I said, you know what, then I'm not going to ask you to cook at home. I'm not going to ask you to stop going. What you're going to do is that you're going to eat half of whatever they serve you from yeah. now on. And I said, you can talk to them, see if they can cut the price in half and only give you half. I don't know what you're going to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're going to eat from now on half of what you, half of what they served you. The first week, it was like a week or two later, he came back, he had lost 10 pounds. Yeah. Just with that. Right. Just with that. He wasn't exercising. He didn't add any fruits and vegetables. He didn't do anything. He just, just cut it in half, 10 pounds. Right. The same with people that are drinking two liter sodas and, you know, stop it, you know, start drinking more water. If right. you really want to lose the weight, because that's the other thing people need to understand, you know, you have to be ready to make these changes. Because when you come to us, dietitians or doctors, because you want to lose weight, you really want to, you'd really need to be clear in your head. Yeah. It's not going to be the same as it's always been, you know, right. something's going to give, right. We don't have a magical wand. Yeah, neither <laughs> I do wish we. I did. I, I wish I did, right. <laughs> but we don't, you, you kind of wish you were Harry Potter and you were just, you would but just it's kind of, yeah, I mean, you, but it's kind of yeah. the same thing with doctors and healthcare. If you think about it too, doc, um, you know, you walk, you guys are rushed. You guys are stressed. You guys, you know, you grab the first thing you have in the, in the vending machines, sodas, sugary stuff, the pick me upper. But what we need to understand is that pick me upper, it's also going to drop you downer, you know, because it's going to raise your blood sugar really fast, going to drop it really fast because your body's trying to, you know, adapt to it or adjust to it. Right. So then you're even, it's even worse. Then you're even tired, more tired. Yeah. Right. On 24 hour call. I'm not joking when sometimes you get a salad and Cafeteria's on the first floor, got a salad. By the time we got to the fourth floor and to MICU, the MICU, I had finished my salad. That can't be healthy, right? I don't really think I took more than two or three bites. That fast? Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So number one, we eat fast. Yeah. Number two, we what, what is uh, portable, right? What we can actually pick up and eat on the way. Um, so, I mean, how, number one, we know that the choices that we have are limited based on 
supply chain, uh, ability of the cooks, cost, right? Number two, timing. Number three, we know that our mood, the lack of sleep, <laughs> the, maybe the crap chance of, I'm tired. This is my seventh day out of 12. I have five more days to go. Uh, I've been working 16 hours. My pager keeps going off. My cell phone keeps going off. Haven't seen my kids. Haven't seen my family. Haven't seen my dog, whatever. Stress piles up. I choose something quick and what's going to feed that reward center. It's burger and fries. Right. This, is, this is the Midwest, right? This is the Midwest. We're beef. We're, we're beef country. So grab fat a Fat and fry. salt. Right, fat and salt. Or exactly. sugar. Well, and then, not- oh, and you, you have to follow it with an ice cream. You do? I, I think <laughs> I'm pretty. kind of what. <laughs> I think I'm lactose intolerant, well, but the, I don't do that. You know, this, <laughs> the fat, the salt, and the sugar. Okay. And that's the three things that um, are going to get you, get you hooked. Right. And it's that, you know, and, and kind of on the side again, people don't understand that you can actually get hooked to this. And it's a true, true addiction to, yeah. to sugar or fat or salt. And it's a true addiction. Yeah. But, you know, you don't think of it because it's not technically hurting you. You're not, it's not visible until it's, you know, later on. Yeah. Um, it's food you have to eat. It's not like it's drugs. You don't have to take drugs. You don't have to drink alcohol, but you have to eat, right? Right. So it's really hard for people to understand. Yes, you can actually get addicted to always grabbing the Snicker bar or the Twix bar instead of the banana or the apple or, you know. How do I change that? I mean, I've I think, changed that for myself. You know, but how do you change uh, that? <laughs> so I mean, you, 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 it's, don't, you, it's don't, a, you don't see commercials, right? You don't see commercials with Betty White with fruit or vegetables, but you do see with the Twix bar back or sorry, Snickers bar back in the day. Right. 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 So I I'm sad to say it's not an easy fix. And that's the other thing that people need to understand. But the first thing you need to do is to accept that it needs to change in my mind. That's what I, you know, I always tell my patients or, and I told myself, because again, we're human, right? Doctors, dietitians, we're also human. Yeah. I'm going to have a snicker bar every so often. Right. Right. So you have to be careful. It's like people that are addicted to alcohol. First, you got to accept it. You got to understand and accept that is an addiction. Right. Second, create a plan. I always encourage counselors. I always encourage doctors because, you know, they may know how to help you. They may have tools that help you Mm -hmm. and, you know, they may have 10 tools, but only one works for you. But guess what? At least one works for you. Right. My counselor has wanted me to, fa- to do a journal for years and mm-hmm. it doesn't work for me. Right. It's, you know, it's kind of funny, but it works for me to talk to friends. It works for me to talk to my husband. It's talks, it helps for me to, to go talk to her. Right. So um, I derailed a little bit, didn't I? That's a, no, 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 no. I, I get it. So it really you, is up you, to you and you wanting to change mm-hmm. and, and you understanding that it's not going to be easy, but being okay with it, right? Being so, okay with it. But so how do I have that insight when, you know, I'm just trying to get through the day? How, how, do you have any from personal experience or anything like that? Do you have any insight on how to start building that awareness or start to build new habits one step at a time? So it depends on the person. And that's, again, why I always sit down with them individually for right. the longest time, because it really right. depends on the person. But for the most part, people that are to the point of exhaustion and mm-hmm. fatigue and like doctor, for example, you guys are constantly skipping meals, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking of like truckers. I had a lot of truckers where I, I used to work before. Right. So think you got to think about kind of when your day starts and when your day kind of ends. Right. Yeah, right. And then make sure that you start your day with something good, wholesome. So even if it's just a smoothie that you blend it on, you know, on your way out the door, yeah, you can prep that the night before you can put all the frozen fruit and stuff in there. You, I did it usually in the morning, but you can do it the night before put the milk in there, whatever it is you want to do in the, in your smoothie and, you know, blend it the, the morning off and head out the door. Mm-hmm. It's, it's starting your day with something in your stomach that helps your body say, Hmm, my day's going to be good. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have some nutrition. I'm going to have some 
water here. I'm going to have some healthy stuff. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to start my day good. If you start your day with a bowl of sugary cereal, <laughs> guess what that's going to do? It's going to dry. It's, well, your blood sugar is going to crash two hours later. You're going to be hungry. Right, so right, right. This perpetual cycle. Right. Exactly. So, because what happens is, you know, your blood sugar goes uh, high, sky high after this sugary loaded or carb loaded, which carbs are not bad. Again, right. they're not all created equal. Exactly. But bad carb loaded right. breakfast. And then it crashes your blood sugar within the first two hours, but nothing is there to hold it. So guess what your brain does? Your brain says, hmm, you'd really need to eat something because my blood sugar is crashing and I'm not quite sure what's going on. So let me get you to hungry. Right. In this world that we live in now that we have food all over the place, of yeah. course, you're going to eat something, but your brain's not going to make you crave the healthy mandarin orange or, you know, <laughs> the healthy salad. It's right. going to make you crave the Snicker bar because <laughs> yeah. it's quicker, right? <laughs> right. It gets into your system quicker. So again, starting your day the best you can with yeah. whatever you have, right? right. Sometimes it's a, it's a, um, a sandwich. I remember when I was pregnant, I was having with my second one, mm -hmm. I had the worst low blood sugars that I've ever had. I mm -hmm. crashed one time to like 50 mm -hmm. and it was crazy. So I figured out that if, and it's funny because my breakfast every day for the most part is one slice of toast with peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter. Cause you know, it has to be crunchy. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Creamy. Sorry. Crunchy haters. Uh -huh. Um, and of course, my, of course, my coffee with milk and, and I put honey now in it. Right. Okay. Cause hello coffee. It has to be hot too. And that's my breakfast every day. And then I eat a banana usually, which is kind of funny midday, but my, my peanut butter toast was not doing the job when I was pregnant. And I was like, so sad. So I started thinking like, what can I do? But everything I could do, it would take me time right. that I wanted to eat while pregnant. Let me make sure <laughs> I emphasize that. So my husband at the time, he was really worried, of course. And I said, you know, all I really want is like an egg sandwich. And I'm thinking that's going to hold me up pretty good. And so he started waking up and doing me the uh, making the, the egg sandwiches for me every single day for like three months in a row. And that was the only thing that would hold me. But I, mm -hmm. in that case, I had his help. Right. Had I not had his help, I had to go then for something like, an overnight oatmeal, you right. know, I'm putting some peanut butter in it or something, you know, yeah. some boiling eggs. It was the other option I was going to make, you know, boiling eggs and because eggs are, eggs are amazing. And I hate that we as a society don't understand that eggs are not bad. <laughs> it's just because we want to have five eggs in one day and then sit down and watch TV. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's where you get in trouble. Right. Right. Hey, That's when you get you. in trouble. I'll just tell you, my thing is, uh, two of easy eggs with some, uh, Mexican green chili. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you know, it's, it's about yeah, that. yeah. It's being realistic, doc. It's, and that's what I always tell my patients too. You have to be realistic in what your goal is. You right. want to lose weight, but you want to keep eating, but you, the way you are, but you don't want to exercise, but you want to lose weight. Hmm. Where, where, <laughs> where is the disconnect in this tri triad here, you know? It's going back. So I always say, you know, okay, if anymore. you don't really want to start exactly. So in the, going back to the doctor's question, if you are a, a resident and you know, you won't have time to exercise, then you really have to make it a point of eating healthier, right? Yeah. Because not exercising, eating crappy process crap, <laughs> it's oh, going yeah. to absolutely make you tired, exhausted, inflamed your body is gonna be inflamed right you no know, you're not gonna be at your top level so whether you want it or not something's gonna give right something's gonna give if you have time to prep your breakfast and lunch the night before mm -hmm. that'll be the other thing i would say if you don't really have time during the day then don't don't plan your meals around going to the cafeteria right don't, even though they may have healthy options, mm -hmm. that takes time for you to get out of your room, wherever you are charting or doing whatever, and going to the cafeteria, getting in line, getting your food, waiting for the food to be prepared, going back up. That's time that you could have sat down calmly and consumed your, <laughs> your prepared lunch right. with time, a little bit at least. 
mm-hmm. so that it's not all, you know, your, your brain at least has some time to process that you ate. And, and, and that's another thing. And of right? course, if you have time the night before. Yeah. What? To, to, to prep meals. So but what were you going to say? I was going to ask you two things. Number one, do you think it's easier nowadays to maybe, and again, you know, sometimes you're on a residence budget, which when you calculate the hours and the pay, it's less than minimum wage. So I don't recommend anybody to do it. But, you know, all humor aside, uh, do you think it's easier nowadays with some of the meal prep services like uh, Freshly.com or Fit and Lean, where you can kind of really tailor? And I know you're all about cooking home, you know, home prepped meals. And I, I so am I. But when you're mm-hmm. working 100 hours a week, it, it's really difficult. I mean, it, it's like, right. Uh, half the time, it was always like a quinoa, wild rice, caprese, and whatever protein we could cook in 15 minutes, right? It, it burns right. you out. So, but right now with these meal services, do you think that's any healthier? Because you can kind of tailor you so know, what without, you want. Right. Without really knowing what they offer, because I really haven't looked into them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, anything that you prep in your home, it's always going to be better than anything that you buy out, especially fast foods. Oh, for sure. I have a place I used to work. I used to run the weight loss clinic and right. this patient, she she just couldn't lose weight and she was tracking her calories and, you know, it was all perfect. She was exercising and it was true. She was not, it was not moving. That Mm -hmm. scale was not moving. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I started looking at what she was truly eating and not focusing just on the calories. And I said, you know what, you're eating most of your meals out. Like you're eating your lunch, you're eating your breakfast at home. You're making something quick. Then you're eating your lunch at the cafeteria and then you're eating your supper in a fast food. I said, let's go ahead and switch one of those two meals for something you bring from home. Right. Make a, you know, and I gave her some ideas and she started losing weight. My theory, which I've never been able to prove of mm-hmm. course, but it's just a theory. So ma- let's make sure it's clear, clear. <laughs> it's right. just it's a just theory. theoretical, but yeah. There's- My theory is that at least in some people bought because of all these processed food, they have stuff in it that some like allergies, you know, some people are allergic to some, you know, proteins and people are not. I think some of us are allergic to the, not to an allergic reaction, but to get inflammation more right. than normal from these additives and processed foods. Right. So then your body, it's in pain. Then your body is, you know, you start gaining weight. You can't really exercise a lot. You're tired all the time. Because that was the other thing. She started having all this energy all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. But here's the deal too. The more processed that food is, right. the less nutrition it has. Oh, for sure. What a lot of people don't understand is that it's not just carbs, protein, and fat, right? It's not just carb, protein, and fat. It's vitamin B complex, you know, your B1, B2, B3, or, or thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, um, B6, B12, right. okay? All of those, your vitamin C, um, zinc, all of those are important in energy production. So it doesn't mm-hmm. matter how much you eat. It's like all these, you know, strong bodybuilders that get all this, you know, gazillion pro- grams of protein in their diet. But if you don't have B12, if you don't have B6, <laughs> guess what? Nothing's going to happen with that protein other than hurting your kidneys. Right. Possibly, right, right. You know? Right. So you, it's not just, the food is not just eating Mm -hmm. is what are you truly eating? So that's, that's adding to this fatigue that healthcare workers are seeing, Mm -hmm. but you're eating. It's so processed and yeah, you take your multivitamin. I get it. But guess what? Half of that you're not absorbing, right? Because one, you're taking one dose in one time and half of that's going to, you're going to pee it out if it's water soluble, right? You know? The other half you may use, but if you didn't eat at the right time, you know, it's not going to do anything because you, your B6 is, you know, here in breakfast and you had your lunch, you know, anyway, it's, and that's part of why I think the Mediterranean diet is so good in Mm -hmm. general, right? Because it doesn't focus on a food group. It doesn't focus on. And when you look at it truly, it focuses on getting then the nutrition, 
right? right. Yes. So you're getting your fresh fruits and vegetables, which then you're going to get your B6, your all your B complex. You're going to get your um, folic acid. You're going to get all the, you know, nutrition, vitamin C. You get your protein, which B12 is only found in animal protein, right? Right. So you get a little bit of chicken, a little bit of beef, a little bit of pork, whatever protein you choose, and your fish, which I'm sorry, we're in the middle of the United States, not really good fish, <laughs> right? but it is something. And then you, and you even get your one, not one, not one bottle, one glass of wine, <laughs> five <laughs> ounces, not that big old <laughs> 24 ounce glass that you right. see at the, uh, in the, in the ads, um, you get a glass of red wine because of the benefits of it, right? And one glass won't get you drunk, won't get you hooked on unless you have a genetic or, you know, predisposition to that or behavior towards that. Right. You get your healthy fats, which also give you magnesium, give mm -hmm. you zinc, like your nuts, for example, that are, it's a big deal in the Mediterranean diet. Right. Right. Yeah. So here's a healthy lunch for a doctor that's on the run. What is that? And it's easy to make. You do, you do it the night before. I, that's what I do most of the sometimes when I don't. I usually go to, and it's on the budget too. So I go to all these. Okay. See that's kosher. So yeah. I go to all these because here's because all these for fresh fruits and vegetables has the best prices, right? And I have one like right behind my house. <laughs> so oh, that's awesome. Very convenient. Yeah. So they met, they sell this spring mix, which I love. And then they sell strawberries, super, super duper cheap. And, um, and I get nuts from there too. Sometimes, sometimes I, you know, I get it from Walmart, but, um, and so I get a salad, a spring mix salad, about two to three cups, depending on how I feel. And then I'll have sliced almonds. Most of the time mm -hmm. I'll put some sliced almonds in because again, it gives you those healthy fats. It gives you the mag magnesium. It gives you a lot of really good nutrition and protein, some mm -hmm. protein, right? Then I'll put some, uh, some cheese in it, sometimes shredded cheese, sliced strawberries. And I'll put, if I have any avocados, Right. it's kind of hard depending on where you're buying it and the season of, but if you find one, then you put some in there mm -hmm. and it sounds like a lot of work, but I always tell my yeah. people, try it, try it because yeah. the almonds are already in a package. Right. The strawberries. Yeah. You got to cut them a little bit, but Hey, yeah. What? 30 Five seconds, minutes. a minute. Yeah. Right. And the more you, Here's the magic too, Doc. The more you do it, the quicker yeah. it gets because you right. get used to it. Yeah. Some craisins because craisins are amazing for urinary tract <laughs> infections. <laughs> and they just give it this delicious sweetness to your salad, right? Sure. Yeah. So you have all this really good flavor in that salad. It's super easy. Everything's already kind of pre done for you. You need to just kind of mix it all. If you want that, sometimes I do that for my kiddos too. I'll boil like eight or 10 eggs on Sunday. Right. And I'll peel them all and put them in the fridge. So if you want, you can get one or two eggs, slice them, or even leave them like that. I sometimes just put them in the salad like that. And I just break them with the fork when yeah. I'm eating. Sure. And then I'll, I'll on the side have a little bit of about a, eh, I don't know how much I put, but about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of olive oil mm. or a tablespoon and then vinegar about the same. I like vinegar. So I put about, I put half and half. And then a sprinkle, a little ditty, teeny tiny dash of salt. Right. And I put it in there in that little bowl that you put your dressing in and I mix it really well. And that's yeah. my dressing. Okay. But you got all this really good flavor in the salad. So you don't really need a bunch of dressing. I do it because I like olive oil. I like the vinegar. I like the flavor mix in my mouth and right. it makes it more refreshing. So if it's a hot day mm -hmm. and I'm tired and it's like exhausting day, then, but it's true. No, you no. know, um, I it's the reality, that. you know, we get, we, we get tired of being tired, but we got to do something about Go it. I'm just going to say, we got right. to do something right. about it. So and it's just making those changes. Clearly whatever you've been doing, right. And because whatever you've been doing and that's, you know, you got to think about whatever you've been doing, is not working. Right. If you're this tired. Right. Right. So, so what are you going to do? Are you going to change? Are you going to stay the same? You can stay the same. That's always a choice. That's, and I had many patients that are like, nah, I'm not going to do that. So yeah. and it's like, okay, perfect. Whenever you're ready, I'm here to help you. Right. right. But if you're going to, if you're ready, then go ahead and do it. Start one thing at a time. Is the one thing I would say one meal at a time right. breakfast, 
Once you get used to breakfast, move on to lunch. Prep your lunch the night before. There's nothing against that. I even right. prep my like my coffee, my cafetera. I don't know how to say that in English. I prep it the night before my coffee maker thingy that you put on the stove. Okay. Yeah, so do I. I it's prep just... it the night before. Yeah. So that way all you got to do is go push the button. It just becomes automatic. It's like your bedtime routine. It's one thing yeah. you do. Mm-hmm. So once you start doing this, it becomes a routine. One more thing. Yes. So one more thing, it's water. I'm all excited now. One more thing is water. Here's the deal. People don't understand that every single process in your body requires that H2O molecule at some degree. Yeah. So you want your body to function, but you're not, you're refusing to give it just water. (laughs) Well, here's the thing, right? But here's the thing. I've, I've been up, you know, as a 24 hour call, have to round with the team the next day as a resident, right? So totally going to grab as much caffeine as I can. Never have been a person for energy drinks or anything like that. I think I've tried one and it gave me palpitations and a headache. So that's it, but it's coffee, coffee, coffee. You know, I'm um, not joking when at some point in life we were doing a, I was doing a 220 ounce uh, black coffees from Starbucks and that's crazy, right? So how does water I believe you. help when I feel like coffee or source of caffeine is going to keep me getting to drive home safely. I knew you were going to ask me that. So I came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. We, we share, we share a, a love of coffee. We know that. Yes. Yeah, so here's what I always tell you guys, whenever you have the need or desire for coffee, mm-hmm. um, follow it with the same size of glass of water. Okay. So at least cause coffee is a dehydrator, right? Right. Yes. So caffeine, not ca- caffeine is a dehydrator. It will make you pee a lot, right? right? So so follow it with a glass of water of the same size, the same with soda. And that's the uh-huh. other thing I always tell my patients too. If they really like soda, I'm always like, okay, so for every glass of soda that you drink, mm. let's go ahead and, and the next thing you drink is the same amount of water. Right. So at least you're, it's a way to kind of change your habit, but not change it completely. And I challenge people to go step away from, I need the coffee to be awake Mm -hmm. because at that point, when you've had that much coffee to be awake, you just need to, you need to sleep. You know, there, there's a safety point there that you need to sleep a nap, you know, take a nap, but 20 minutes, something. I know residents are, it's hard. I don't know because I didn't go through that, but listening to your story, I know it's hard. I understand it's hard, but food and water and nutrition can only do as much, right? You know, so pills can only do as much when you're actually hydrated as you should be with water. What does that do to your body? What does that do to your mood? So it should, it, it should help you again. You're tired, right? So right. It's, it's not a magic wand, it's not a magic wand, right? Right. It's right. not going to magically make you ah, so energetic. However, um, it's going to help your body. It, let's say you do start eating healthier. You start eating a little bit more food, uh, fruits and vegetables, those vitamins, those vitamins and minerals in the food, the fruit, the vegetables and nuts water is going to help use it and turn Mm -hmm. it into energy, right? It's going to help turn it into healthy energy, not caffeine energy, because caffeine, all it does is kind of the same as sugar, raises you up and then it crashes you down. Right. So all you're really doing with the back to back to back coffee is going up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. That will make you even more tired. Right. So I invite you to, instead of coffee, 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 look at it at, okay, I'll have my cup of coffee and then I'll have a mandarin orange. The next time you, you're probably going to need to pick me up or a couple, you know, an hour, a couple of hours later, snack on some nuts, you know, not duck, my nuts are my favorite snack with yes. caution, right? With caution. Right. But one nut at a time will mm-hmm. keep you busy. will keep you awake. And it will give you also some nutrition that will help a little bit, not again, magically, but will help you. Right. So, so the whole thing. So again, is, I, have to, I do have a question right there. Why sure. Do you, why do you say one nut at a time? Because we're kind of a culture of a flyby and, you know, I'm going to reach in my pocket, get, my, get a handful of almonds or pistachios and 
pop them in my mouth while I'm walking to the wards. So why why one nut at a time? So I I said that because I picture you charting, right? So that's kind of when you usually did the nuts. So right, I picture you charting. So I picture residents and healthcare provide and healthcare workers while they're charting falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, one nut at a time kind of keeps you on a pace where you're chewing. You're not going to fall asleep if you have some really good stuff in your mouth. Right. Oh, oh, by the way, it's not honey roasted, sugary chocolate covered nuts. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, so that's that's what that's one the reason. Way. The other reason. It, it was, was dark, dark chocolate. chocolate. It was, it was dark really chocolate. good. I like dark chocolate, though. So do I. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I digress. Um, um but the other reason is um, it's called mindful eating. Right. But I don't know that when you're in that in the middle of that tiredness and, you know, so tired and exhausted that you're going to be mindful eating anything. To me, it's more just going to keep you awake. Right. It's, it's make you, making you take time, mm -hmm. making your body take time to digest um, and then just kind of pacing yourself learning to pace yourself because that's the other thing you know at least i learned to eat you know breathe my food i don't eat i breathe my food mm -hmm. so if i tell myself i'm gonna eat one nut at a time i'm kind of forcing myself to slow the eating but that's right? actually kind of from what i've from what i understand that's actually better number one it allows our body to send the signal to our brain that we are actually eating, right. we are actually getting nutrition. And right. so that allows our body to get those signals and have some type of satiety versus just blowing through it and kind of missing all those signals. Right. Um, but right. when somebody's the, tired- The general rule is 20 minutes. I would be happy at sometimes if I could just do 10. I agree. <laughs> See, we're humans. That's, that's the funny thing. We're humans, we're in the same boat. Right. Right. But when you can, it's always important to take that time, slow down. And, you know, I'd like to refer to the uh, pr two previous podcasts, um, talk to Bob Bean, Dr. Bean, right? And he was talking about mindfulness and, Dr. Bean. and he, he's wonderful, right? But we have to remember that mindfulness is not- He is just, amazing. He, and, I, you know, he was part of our team as well. And I think part of that was just, we, we worked really well together, but you also met the patients where they were at. And I think part of the, mm -hmm. part of the, uh, being a physician, I've learned to step back, but not everybody has, and everybody's different. Like you said, everybody's different, but slowing down, making mindful choices, meal prepping, and it doesn't have to be a gourmet meal, um, but putting in nope. a, a, at least some effort to use food as medicine because we need that fuel, it will actually help us feel better over time. Won't, won't fix everything, but it is one area where we have control over. And we know that if we put the wrong things in our body, it's going to make us feel worse. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the few times I don't feel the best is when I have ice cream at night. It's sad. So, you know, and I know it's going to make me feel sick. So I don't do it that much, right. but it, it, I stopped it because it dawned on me, you know, I've had ice cream and this, because again, we're humans. And right. sometimes I I'm so, so, so stressed that I'm just like, I can't, I need candy. So I, I had a couple of nights where I had ice cream back to back. And then I, it kind of dawned on me, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, it's making you wake up so sluggish and to feel worse. Right. So I stopped it. But, you know, again, it takes awareness to understand, yes, what you're eating can make you feel like crap or can help you feel better. Yes. Remember, you are worthy. You are human. Take care.
the second time around, the second time.